Up here, their heads may feel lost in the clouds, even though it's the jungle mist dragging them further in. Taking on a new evil, the unknown of Panama, a country with nothing for them bar a swift, expensive ticket on through north and leaving behind another, the cash drain of organised Colombian cartels. The porters give parting wisdom. I feel so, <laughs> so tired. <laughs> Any euphoria up here is completely misplaced. Slowly, the scale of the lie some have been told emerges. This isn't a short walk ahead. Especially acute is Anna's plight. She's 12, disabled, and gets epileptic convulsions. Her mother, Natalia, is the only one who can care for her, but it's so much harder up here. She later tells us she was told the descent was a matter of two hours, but it's not. And literally metres from Colombia, the ground turns. People as they walk just discarding their shoes. A real sense of the atmosphere changing now we've crossed the border into Panama. People clumping together, perhaps fearing for their own safety. And this mud is just impossible. You go and get your feet out of it. This man, who didn't want to be named, now with nothing on his feet but his resolve. Pause and imagine where you've come from if you're willing to do this barefoot with a woolen sweater and plastic bags. Pierce your feet or break an ankle and this mud may be your grave. <laughs> the mother Natalia has managed to find a Haitian man to help her move her disabled daughter Anna. Porque ella un cojo no puede caminar. Yo te ayudo a su mamá. No puedo. So much this route is insanely steep and so many of the people that we've spoken to on the way are complaining about how this was nothing like the easy route they were promised. Understandably, it doesn't take long for the Haitian volunteer to tire. Anna might be having a fit, or just tired, or both, or neither. This could be how she often gets, we just don't know. And without her mother way back behind her on the trail, nobody really knows what she needs. The Haitian migrant who helped begins cutting a stretcher, hoping others will come. But they all face the same problem. They can't move her without taking her further from her mother. So she is stuck, waiting. But sometimes the jungle throws back a moment of life. And this day, it's Leuven's turn. The little boy with a terrible cough and fever we met earlier has made a miraculous recovery overnight, as if another life has been breathed into him. <laughs> Sometimes the forest suddenly breaks and you realise just how many of us there are here. Even in these shallows, the scraps of us as a species are overwhelming. Ling is from Wuhan, among the growing Chinese here, who doesn't want to show his face and learned about the gap from TikTok. First from Hong Kong. Ah, from Hong Kong, okay. Then Thailand. Hong Kong and Thailand. And then Turkey. 
Wow. Okay. And then um, Ecuador. Ecuador and yeah. then Colombia. Yes. Uh, a little bit hard, but uh, my least a uh, little bit hurt. Yeah, M many Chinese come here because the, the Ch Chinese society is not very, uh, very, very good for, for leave. He's paused to rest his knee, but also run out of food already. Talk on their third dawn out here turns to how much further there really is. Jean-Pierre was told it would be a much shorter walk. Vous avez eu peur non Non, pas que non. Je peux le dire, le Dieu te nous garde. Ouais. Moi et mon fils et ma femme et nos autres, nos autres amis, le Dieu nous garde nous tous. Je veux ça. Anna, the disabled 12-year-old, has been reunited with her mother. But they're again stuck and without food. She says they're only here as that same medicine became unaffordable in Venezuela. Just after dawn, they set out again. The canopy begins to feel like a shroud, entombing them, cutting them off from the future they're pushing towards. Nature's most beguiling way of saying, don't come here. For so much of every day, you stare at your feet, your most vital asset here, hoping they land safely, especially in the opaque river where one loose footing can break an ankle. Most migrants wear these rubber boots which fill with water, curdling your feet. But Manuel and Tamara, who we met on the first night, have their eyes on the finish. This route is littered with obstacles, choke points and lines. Hours on their feet without the comfort of knowing you're at least moving. Forever damp, striding, waiting. What's crazy is over the last hour we probably haven't travelled directly about more than 50 to 100 yards. But this is just one enormous traffic jam of people through the jungle. Um, the sad fact is the more of them that do it, the more they slow each other down at bottlenecks like this and the greater risk they put themselves at. Time and time again though, this ordeal summons something beautiful from people that mirrors nature here. A glue binding them to each other to help cajole, care sometimes for strangers, of survival, survival together. It's the best of us and doesn't care what passport you're carrying, but it cannot alter the pain. How are you finding the road? Rocks, it's sore. My mom fell down so many times. Okay. 
esto es lo peor que hay en este mundo, pasar por esta selva. It seemed almost impossible in the chaos two days ago, but Wilson has met up again with his parents. Not in a Miami swimming pool, though, just yet. Exhaustion now decides everything. This camp, at first a handful of people, and then suddenly overflowing. Yendry admits they are out of food. They gave it all away earlier, thinking this was a two-day hike. More urgently, she needs to soothe her mother, who's gripped her stick too hard to stay upright, her gloves no help. The pristine, unbothered green hides a dark, violent change that's been afoot here for years. These people have become the new weight, the new traffic. The cartels move less drugs along these routes these days, we're told. These human packages pay to move themselves. Nobody steals them. There are few arrests to be made, nothing to raid out here. And all the risks are taken by the packages themselves. 